Hey everyone, this is round one of my playthrough of the approach to Thistletop scenario in the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path in the... where's a card with a back to it? Pathfinder adventure card game. Alright, we've kind of leveled up in several places and we are we are very near really sort of the completion because if I beat this scenario approach to Thistletop then the final scenario in the Burnt Offerings adventure is Thistletop Delve. So Thistletop, approach to Thistletop, it, it has four locations for two player characters as usual so there's the Goblin Fortress, the nettle maze, the woods, we've been to the woods before, but this is probably a different woods, or maybe it's the same woods, uh, and treacherous cave. There are a lot of cards, I feel like. I didn't count, but I do feel like there are a lot of cards. I know there are a lot of monsters. This is going to be a pretty treacherous scenario, I think, but I said that about the last one, too. Uh, let's read up about approach to Thistletop. The Goblin Raiders might have been defeated, but already they're regrouping in their lair of sticks and brambles amid the ruins called Thistletop. Strike back against the goblins and find out what's been stirring the disorderly maniacs to attack. So we're pursuing the goblins back to their fortress, is essentially what, what the story is here. And um, the global rule for this scenario is the difficulty to defeat monsters with the goblin trait is increased by 1d4. Okay. I would rather have that than the fire damage, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. So the goblins are tricky still. And we have a lot of different locations to explore. I feel like the goblin fortress thematically should be the last place we go. But there are only three, and there are only three monsters in the fortress. The nettle maze has f six monsters in it. The woods has four monsters. I, I remember back when I thought four monsters in one location was a lot. And then the treacherous cave has two monsters. So, and of course, there's a henchman and a villain somewhere in these in, in each of these locations. It, it's 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 going to be interesting. I've rebuilt the character decks, of course. Couple of couple of new weapons, I think, for Valeros, or maybe not. Yeah, the long spear is kind of a new-ish weapon from last scenario. And we'll see how we go. So even though thematically I feel like the Goblin Fortress should be the final stop, because that's kind of like where we're going, I don't know, I just, for some reason, I feel like that's where I should start. So who knows? Maybe uh, maybe we storm the castle first and then pursue the goblins to the places that they escape to. Valeris is our tank. Turn over a timer card and see what happens. First he needs a hand, though. That That's that's important. His hand, of course, has to, requ has to um, contain a weapon, and it does this time around. So he's good to go. He's good to start. He's alone. Sioni is not here yet. And so he's going to start exploring. Oh, well, let's, let's read about the Goblin Fortress first. Crashes, discordant singing, and manic laughter ring from the crude walls of this goblin hold fast. A fortress of branches, scrap metal, and garbage as elaborate as it is ramshackle. The bodies of unfortunate travelers, the paint-smeared skins of livestock, and the half-eaten remains of seagulls serve as warnings of the inhabitants' violent whims and demented sense of humor. At this location, the difficulty to defeat monsters with the goblin trait is increased by two. Okay, so that's an increase by two and an increase by 1d4. That's going to be fun. Uh, closing the location, summon and defeat a goblin raider henchman. Okay. So I'll have to have that ready. I don't think I have one on hand, but I can dig one up. Okay, so it's uh, Valeros' turn. Let's just... <laughs> There's the villain. Um, I swear to you I did not plan that. Uh, that's really awkward. 
and funny. Villain on the first draw has not happened in a while, so okay. Before the encounter, Gogmert deals 1d4 minus 1 fire damage. You may not play allies with the animal trait. All damage from Gogmert is fire damage. Okay. So we can defeat this guy a couple of different ways. First with a combat of 10. And then another combat of 12. He's, um, he's just a... He's a, he's a powerful guy. He's a villain. So 10 and then 12. And I think what that means essentially is that, unless I'm mistaken, I think that means I can only use... No, I think per check, for your combat check, reveal the card to roll your strength. I was going to say, I think I can only use the longsword once. Th that bonus once. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. That's, um... I, I don't really understand 100% the the cascade of requirements all the time. Th those, I feel like that complicates a card considerably. So, let's see. Encounter the villain. Each Bane card has a section called Defeat. Check to Defeat. This section indicates the skills that can be used against the Bane and the difficulty of the checks. If multiple checks are listed on the card with or between them, choose one of them. If there's a then between them, you'll need to succeed at both checks sequentially to defeat the Bane. You must attempt both checks even if you fail the first, because failure often has consequences. Or takes priority over then. Any character at that location can attempt one or more of the checks as long as the character who encounters the Bane attempts to at least one of them. That doesn't apply here because Valeris is alone. If the character who encountered the Bane is not able to attempt at least one of the checks, the Bane is undefeated, and other players don't need to try. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about this constituting a single, a single check, so I believe he can use his longsword bonus for each round or each whatever these are called. Anyway, he's going to get damage first. So it's 1d4 minus 1. And of course I would roll a 4. So 3 points of damage to Valeros. Now... Before the encounter. I don't know if before the encounter means that I don't have an opportunity to block it, or if it means just before the encounter. So, because I don't have clarity about that, and I haven't been able to find clarity about it, I'm going to assume that the reason they're saying before the encounter means that this is a surprise round, essentially. And so, I lose three cards. So that's pretty harsh. Uh, this is a long sword. He'll keep that, thanks. And then he's going to roll his d10 for his strength. He gets a free 3 for his melee and a d10 for the longsword. So he needs to first roll a 10 across 2, well, a 7 across 2 d10. And he rolled a 6. And then, obviously, there's no way he could roll less than a 1 on this d10. So he succeeds at the first combat check to defeat this villain. So he will invoke his longsword again to grant him a bonus d10. He's still got his bonus plus 3 for melee. So now he's trying to get a 12, or I guess you could say a 9, across 2 d10. That's a 3, and a 2, so he fails. So 3 and a 2, plus that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he's supposed to take 4 damage, he can't. So he loses his longsword to this, to this sinister little goblin druid. And now the goblin druid escapes to one of the remaining locations.
because this villain was not defeated in combat, he takes three cards, one for each um, open location. Nope, sorry. Two cards, so that we have three cards here. And then we shuffle the deck, and I know which card is his, so I'm going to just try to close my eyes and not think about the card that uh, I think is his. And so now I'm going to shuffle these cards into each other location. So this is both good and bad, because that means that this entire deck, we can we can now we we now know for sure, um, is not the villain. So that's that that is a closed location. So in a way, that's really really great for us. I'll I'll shuffle those later. Um, in a way, that's really great for us because I mean that's one location we no longer have to worry about. We still have lots of other locations. We have a timer deck, but I mean, that was literally the first card that we encountered. So that's actually, if we're going to encounter it, we might as well encounter it there. Took heavy losses. Valeros is down four cards from his draw deck. So that's not great for him. But, um, but we are, we're, we're, we're good on timer and Sioni hasn't even had her turn yet. So I guess not a bad start in a weird way. And I'll pick it up next time. Thanks for watching.